Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mysteries and Oddities video. I promised I was going to start this over the weekend, but in looking at some of the suggestions, some of them really piqued my interest, so I wanted to go ahead and talk about them here. Start the new set of series of videos. I'll probably do about maybe five, maybe one more after that as well, so be on the lookout for those in the future. This subject I actually did talk about briefly with regards to one of my other cryptids and monsters videos uh, this was a while back I just incorporated it within the video but thinking now how this particular new series is perfect for discussing this in a standalone video I thought I would bring it back and then provide more information with regards to it it's a very rare phenomenon something that has been around for hundreds of years centuries but only a few people have experienced it and the evidence associated with it is even rarer that's because of its quote unquote life cycle like it only appears briefly and when that happens uh, people only have moments to experience it and then poof it's gone and so I'm talking about the extremely rare phenomenon but very fascinating one known as ball lightning which you're looking at a picture of here I'm sure you've heard of this phenomenon I've heard of it as well so I'll try to present as much information as possible including a lot of notable instances of people encountering it and some recent ones too so that way I can share with everyone here so so what is ball lightning well this colloquial term it's basically it's think of it like lightning but instead of one long streak or bolt crashing down into the earth from the sky in this case it's the size of a small ball generally around the size in today's terms considered to be about the size of a volleyball and this thing, uh, what makes it so eerie and so fascinating at the same time is because unlike lightning strikes, which are instantaneous and, and just completely random, like you have no idea when it'll happen, and on top of that, it's gone by the time you even notice it, this ball lightning seems to have a very calculated sense of movement. It moves very slow, or it could move very fast. There was one incident that I was reading where uh, the people that were seeing it saw it from miles away and then bam it was right there right uh, right on top of them shortly thereafter so pretty scary stuff with this ball lightning it has some characteristics of it that mimic lightning in the sense that it is very hot in fact people that have reported being near ball lightning state that they can like feel the air change within the wherever they're at and when it passes through certain things in a weird way it'll singe certain items because of its hotness and in other ways it will not like it'll actually leave the items untouched even though it passes through them people also seem to describe that it has like a smell of some sort and way back when uh, when some of those instances that I'll describe here in a minute people reported like a very strong sulfuric smell whatever that is uh, with regards to its odor that's how they described it today it seems to have like a very strong I guess like oxygen type smell the kind where uh, the, they, the room just feels or smells completely oxidized like if you were to walk into a room and it has a very strong potent smell that's what people describe when they're across this thing incidences of it happen everywhere across the world in fact uh, the uh, there's about a five percent if you can believe that five percent of the population today's population that have described uh, seeing this fall lightning either up close for those rarer ones or from far away and these incidences happen both outdoors which is the best thing I guess to happen in the sense that um, you most likely see it from very far away and there's going to be no harm associated with you or other incidences are where people have seen them inside an enclosed space in this case it could be homes or the worst case scenario it could be airplanes so very fascinating stuff there's no I guess plan with these things they'll just come out of the blue and then that's it the most common I guess experience that people have with this thing is whenever you see a strong set of lightning strikes then chances are if you stay glued to that location you know just look around uh, keep your eyes open 
then you may have a strong chance of seeing uh, these these ball lightnings because all those lightning strikes it just seems to ionize or just create something within the air and then for very brief moments somewhere in the distance you'll be able to see this ball lightnings I get I guess if the conditions are still so right because clearly you and I have been through thunderstorms already whether we are in an apartments or our homes through them or driving through them in the rain and no ball lightnings in those cases but at least with this uh, type of, of incidents like if you're in the right place at the right time then yes you will see it there now as far as the experiences that people have had you know with regards to this ball lightning again this has gone back hundreds of years probably even before uh, stuff could even be reported or cited down some of the most notable ones I'll highlight here. By far one of the best known examples of ball lightning, which at that time was attributed to something else completely religious, was the great thunderstorm of Whitecombe in the Moor, which you're looking at a drawing of here. This was an infamous thunderstorm that occurred in Devon, England back in October 1638. 1638, that's a long, long time ago. So whatever happened here, uh, this still remains somewhat of a mystery, but people still attribute it to it being an incidence of ball lightning. So according to eyewitnesses, there was this quote-unquote great ball of fire that ripped through the window of the uh, church, the large church that uh, there was a sermon happening there that Sunday. Not only that, but it tore apart part of the roof as well. And then much to everyone's huge fear and shock, whatever this ball lightning was, it started rebounding around the church. Like imagine again, if you would just take a volleyball and hurl it with a huge amount of might, it'll just bounce around the room, corner to corner, wall to wall. That's how this thing was doing. And things took a tragic turn because this ball lightning, anywhere it struck, in this case some of the uh, members of the church, it killed them as well, while at the same time burning several others too. So very scary stuff that, because the way also people describe ball lightning is it's it attracts uh, like humans can attract it. I guess whatever we are... are uh, consisted of like our own electricity inside our bodies whenever that happens uh, there's a ball lightning nearby in other words then we seem to attract and so imagine the fear in these people they're trying to run away and this thing almost methodically is chasing after them because of the after effect of their own body so how crazy and scary is that several other instances report that too where people state that it's almost like this thing is fully chasing them chasing them room to room too oh you know that would be that's not good that would be very very scary um, but yes this is one of the most known instances with regards to this ball lightning it was originally attributed to um, something involving the devil only because uh, this is a church it was on Sunday there was a very strong sulfuric smell as I was mentioning earlier uh, with regards to this ball lightning and so people were thinking that that this was something with regards to a visit from Satan himself but to today's world it's more attributed to a very unfortunate but a very strong uh, case of ball lightning another incident occurred at a, at a ship it's called the Montague this was in 1749 there was an Admiral Chambers there on that ship uh, he was there with his crew of course and this was just before noon that's when they noticed that somewhere off in the distance there was a large ball of blue fire the way they described it three miles away so three miles away knowing that they didn't want to take any chances it seemed like people knew what ball lightning was at that time or at least have heard about others experiencing it they lowered their top sails I guess to make sure that they would not have this thing be attracted to their boat but it was too little too late the way they described it was it came upon it came uh, upon them so fast that before they could do anything else there it was right above their ship about 40 or 50 yards away and with a great explosion it's almost it struck like it struck a portion of their ship and then it sent out like a huge discharge so it was crazy stuff like the top mast was completely shattered into pieces and again people reported a very very strong sulfurous smell so how 
eerie is that? Imagine again three miles away and then in minutes it's right there, right by that boat, and then it seems like it's almost attacking them. Uh, another known instance was from the Emperor of Russia, the Tsar Nicholas II. He himself reported describing you know, witnessing one of these things as well in the company of his own grandfather. He stated that there was a very powerful thunderstorm, streaks of lightning all across this thunderstorm, and then all of a sudden things became quite dark. I guess things became like quite silent, whatever that case was. And then lo and behold, a huge blast of wind blew open one of the doors within their home. And then that's when there was a long clap of thunder, the way he described it, and then almost making like a grand entrance. Finally, a fiery ball flew through the window straight towards one of the members there. So yeah, uh, again, crazy stuff. I would imagine seeing it in person would be quite another experience than just seeing these drawings and seeing these photos that that you're watching in my video here, because uh, it would look almost otherworldly to see this ball of electricity, this ball of fire, in the way it it just moves around randomly. If you're wanting to know, are there recent incidences? Yes, there are. In fact, there was something involving in the Czech Republic, July 2011. Apparently, a large ball of light, six feet, six feet, so the, easily one of the larger ones that uh that that I was describing here than some of the earlier ones. This one went into a control room of a local emergency services there. And the way the witnesses there described it, this thing again bounced around from room to room. In this case, from the window to the ceiling, back to the floor, back to the ceiling, and it even rolled around on the floor itself. Finally, it disappeared into the floor, and then that was it. So people there were describing that things smelled electrical, like uh, like there was like electricity uh, burning, something along those lines. Like that was the smell that they encountered, and that this uh, thing it froze the computers within that emergency service control room not necessarily like crashing them but still whatever it was made of um, uh, still impacted a lot of the electrical equipment there too and then also 2014 just two years ago December 15th there was a flight flight BE-6780 a scary situation because talk about an enclosed area being within a flight you don't get more enclosed than that a ball lightning actually entered the cabin right there in front of the cabin people saw it people experienced it and then it went outside of the aircraft's nose and then that was it that was the, the last thing that people saw of it so as far as what ball lightning could be consisted of i was reading an article stating that it could be made of ions it could be of course an electrical discharge a remnant of the lightning itself it could just be another set of material that we don't know exactly what it's made of. It's still so mysterious to this day uh, because of the lack of evidence of it. Sure, there have been simulations of it. Like um, I'm sure if you go online, you'll find people reporting that they can create something related to this ball lightning. But still, to try to capture the real thing and then showcase what it's made of, that's what's going to make the difference. That's what's truly going to prove what once and for all ball lightning is so anyways that's all the information associated uh, with this very rare but very powerful and fascinating phenomenon to me the freakiest thing would be again having this thing come across and almost chase you in fact most incidences of ball lightning seem to be indoors not outdoors if you can believe it so this thing this ball lightning whenever it's formed from these thunderstorms it seems like it'll almost actively go to a residence and then that's where people encounter it most of the time so how kooky how crazy is that so if you're lucky and let's use that word loosely but if you wanted to try to catch this thing in person again try to be outside if possible during a, with a huge thunderstorm lots of lightning strikes and then keep your eyes open wherever you are if your situation allows you to do that obviously without being in danger obviously without getting wet 
but if you can do that then then you can look outside and keep your eyes open you may just catch this thing so has anyone seen ball lightning before anyone know others that have seen it still a rare phenomenon five percent of people have seen it so count all your friends co-workers together and five percent of them would have seen it so some if someone has please post those comments below that'd be really really great to hear so all right everybody thanks again as always take care